It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG352UCG6. The OSD is controlled by a joystick on the underside of the bottom bezel in the middle below the Aegon logo, Aegon being the series of monitor from AOC that this belongs to, and that's their gaming monitors. Um, if you twiddle the joystick to the left, it cycles the input source. So it doesn't bring up a list and have them listed and you select them, it actually just cycles through them straight away, which, as you can see, can be a little bit annoying. There's also a blue LED. Um, which you can't see from a normal viewing position, for example, where the camera is now. I will show you that uh, a bit later on in the video. That goes amber when the monitor enters a low power state, for example, when signal to the PC is lost. Um, it's blue ordinarily, but as I say, you can't really see it from a normal viewing position. Um, and when the monitor's off, um, or you've turned it off by clicking in the joystick, then the LED disappears. If you twiddle the joystick up, nothing happens, there are no functions assigned to that. If you twiddle it down, you can change the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. If you twiddle it to the right, that's how you enter the main menu system. The first section is luminance, and this allows you to adjust things like the contrast, brightness. There's game colour. And this is a, a saturation enhancement function, a bit like NVIDIA Digital Vibrance, except built into the monitor. If you increase this, what it does is it pulls shades closer to the edge of the colour gamut, so it increases the saturation of um, most shades, but it doesn't expand the colour gamut itself at all. So all you're really doing is pulling them closer to the edge of the colour gamut so they become more saturated but the most saturated shades that the monitor displays are exactly the same um, and you just massively crush your shade variety by doing that and things just look completely wrong so it's something that some users may like to fiddle about with especially in some games and it's quite a flexible solution because you can uh, change it in single unit increments and you can also decrease it further than 100 and then you start losing saturation so you can actually have the monitor completely monochrome if you want for, for whatever reason but for the best shade variety and the most natural look to the image I would just keep this on 100 or if you really have to make adjustments just make sure they're not too extreme shadow control and that is a bit like the black equaliser um, found on BenQ monitors and various other gaming monitors have similar kind of settings and this changes the gamma curve uh, so that dark shades appear lighter than they should and therefore you can see better in dark areas of the game and that kind of thing. Zero is the neutral position. Um, I'm in quite a bright room here so this probably isn't going to be ideal for this demonstration but um, if you increase the shadow control to one it lightens shades up quite a bit, especially the darker shades, so they become lighter and that increases your visibility in dark areas. You increase that to two, it uh, turns it up another notch, and three is the highest setting for the best visibility, um, but again upsets the natural look to the image and isn't as the developers intend. So it's there for if you want a competitive advantage. I think I should also mention here that I've used shadow control on many AOC monitors before and usually the steps up are more pronounced than this, which isn't a good thing. Um, for example, even if you just used one, it would just completely flood the image and it would just be basically unusable. On this monitor, the more gradual adjustments are good because it means it actually um, has a bit of practical purpose. Three different gamma settings. Gamma 1, Gamma 2 and Gamma 3, explored in the review. Overdrive, also explored in the review. You can set that to various different settings, from off to weak to light to medium and strong. I would recommend medium. 
game mode. These are presets on the monitor. I mentioned these in the written review, but all they do is just change things on this luminance menu here to various preset values. So they don't achieve anything you couldn't achieve with manual adjustments. The gamer mode um, does exactly the same. Um, the only difference is that when you adjust things with the gamer mode, it actually saves your settings, whereas the other presets are just completely predetermined. So if you change anything after, for example, enabling the FPS mode, and then you change presets to something else, then go back to FPS, it just reverts to the defaults for the FPS mode. Whereas Gamer will just will remember your settings, so when you go back on it, it you can recall the settings. I prefer to just leave this off because, as I said, there's really no point in there. You don't get any extra flexibility or access to anything extra. Colour setup. This has a low blue mode, a low blue light setting, and you can increase that from 0 to 20 in single unit increments. And this gives a much warmer look to the image. It decreases the blue light output from the monitor significantly. I explore this more in the written review. Various colour temperature settings. User mode allows you to adjust the red, green and blue channels manually. There's also a warm, which is the factory default, and that just sets the colour channels to 65 apiece. There's normal, which gives a strange cool look to the image. Not cool as a good thing, cool as in too blue. Um, cool, which gives an even cooler look to the image. sRGB, which I explore in the written review, and it does lock the brightness, so it's not really very useful, and it doesn't change the gamma or anything like that, so it's not really very useful. And user, which again is the most flexible, and I think most people will like to use. This OSD setup allows you to change various things about the OSD itself, for example, the language it's displayed in. The timeout period, which is how long after the last button press before it automatically disappears. The horizontal position and the vertical position, so you can change where on the screen the OSD is displayed. You can adjust the transparency, the transparency effect of the OSD. There's a break reminder feature, and what that'll do if you turn that on is it will remind you after you've been using the screen for an hour to take to take a break and um, then you just press a button and it'll dismiss the message or twiddle the joystick and it dismisses the message. Um, last but not least there's extra. This allows you to reset everything to the factory defaults. Um, I don't think it actually resets the colour channels so be careful. Be aware that the neutral position for them is actually 65, the optimal position is 65. So make adjustments using 65 for each channel as a base. Um, if you make adjustments there and you mess things up then you reset everything. You might not necessarily um, get everything reset there. But it resets all the other settings. There's an overclock feature. And all this does, you just have it set to on like I have now if you want to enable the 120Hz refresh rate. If you have that off, then 120Hz will not be listed as a refresh rate and you'll be able to set a maximum of 100Hz. It's a bit odd that there's a kind of a slider here with max refresh rate as if you can select something higher than 120 but you can't. Um, it's just 120 or nothing. And then once you've enabled your overclock, you just press apply and reboot. It'll restart the monitor and hopefully you'll have 120 hertz listed um, as a refresh rate that you can use. And I didn't um, come across any disadvantage at all using 120 hertz, but I did find it to be advantageous. So that's uh, what I would use. Deep sleep. Um, what this does is it, when it's enabled, it slightly reduces the standby power consumption of the monitor because it... Uh, allows it to enter a sort of even lower power state. It's just an energy star compliance thing. If you have, if you send your computer to sleep and you find that your monitor is not waking up properly with your computer, have this set to off and that might help. Um, it'll slightly increase the standby power consumption, but we were talking of fractions of a watt here, I think, so um, I wouldn't worry too much about that if you need to turn it off. USB charge, a similar feature, um, except it 
pertains to the USB ports. With that set off, standby power consumption is a bit, uh, a bit lower, but you won't be able to use the USB ports to charge peripherals. Um, with it set to on, you can charge peripherals with the USB ports. LED color. Now this is an interesting one. I'll have to unmount the camera to show you this. You can set that there are strips of LEDs, um, one either side of the Aegon logo. And there's also some at the back, which I'll show you very shortly. You can change the intensity of these LEDs. So there's strong, medium, or weak. On the video, these probably won't uh, appear very obvious. And also, now I'm, uh, I've got the camera down here, you can see the blue LED around the joystick as well. In addition to changing the intensity of the LEDs, or you can have them off if you prefer, you can also change the colour to red. And this looks more of a sort of true red rather than a slightly orangey red it's probably going to look like on the video. Or you can have them blue. And I'll show you at the rear of the monitor there are some little wings, as I like to call them, either side of the stand, which again reflect the various colours um, that you've got them set to in the OSD. So there's red as well, or you can have them green, or you can have them off. And they're controlled alongside the ones at the bottom, so you can't independently control them. One thing I would say about the wings at the back, um, you can't really see them from the front of the monitor. Even with the white wall behind me um, in a dark room, I don't really get any light that I can see surrounding the monitor, so it isn't like a biased light or anything like that. It isn't really even a feature you can appreciate from the front at all. It's uh, more for people who I don't know, admire their monitor from the rear or you can actually see it and you don't have it up against a wall like I do, I guess. Um, as for the strips down here, I don't know, sometimes I kind of like having them a particular colour, but other times um, I just like to keep them off, which is uh, fair enough, I guess. Finally, there's a little reminder of the resolution you're currently running the monitor at and the refresh rate you're currently running the monitor at, as well as whether you've got G-Sync active or not. With G-Sync being active, um, this indicates that it's active in the graphics driver and it's all connected to a compatible NVIDIA G-Sync uh, GPU, and means you can use the technology in a game or whatever. It doesn't mean it's currently being used. And also that refresh rate is an indication of the static refresh rate you've selected in Windows or your game. It doesn't actually change along with the uh, frame rate when you've got G-Sync active, so you can't use that as a, a frame rate uh, indication or anything like that. So that's all there is to the OSD, on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG352 UCG6. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside some information about how you can support the work that we do.